Hello everyone. We're back once again. I am Tim with Golf Cart Garage. I am a member of the Gearheads on Demand service that we offer at Golf Cart Garage. Uh, we come here, I used to say we come here every week. Now we're coming here twice a week. We're showing up twice a week. We, uh, on, at noon central time, we are here every week, Tuesdays and Thursdays. So Tim, Tuesdays and Thursdays at noon central time. We are live right now. We are live at both Tuesdays and Thursdays at, at 12 noon. We're live right now. Uh, if you're interested in scheduling an appointment to talk with me one-on-one -on -one or one of the other technicians at Golf Cart Garage, you can click on the link in the description and that will bring you to the scheduling page. It's, that's the service that we call Gearheads On Demand. So, because you can pick a time that's convenient and I will call you. I'll call your phone at whatever time you picked. It's all, it's, the software is automatic. I get notified that you, that you scheduled something and I, I end up calling you at the time that you picked and it's, it's really neat. It's a, it's a really, really cool service, very high tech. Uh, if you think it needs to be a video, I can also send you a link to your phone at the scheduled time. And when you click the link at whatever time you picked, I'll be able to see through your camera and I'll be able to see what you're pointing at. Sometimes that may help in a golf cart situation. So if you're interested in that, click the link in the description and, and that, that can be arranged easy enough. This is today, this is episode 54. It's episode 54. And like I said, we are live and the, go uh, the garage is now open. So let's get started with some of the regularly scheduled questions. And we're going to get started on that. But anybody, please feel free to join in the live chat. If you're watching, feel free to say something in the live chat. Ask a question if you need to, or just say, what's up, Tim? All right, let's get started with question one. Hello, I have inherited an older EasyGo TXT with an on-cart analog battery meter. I charge my 36 volt battery set with a Summit 2 charger and it gets a full green charge indication and the app shows everything is okay. However, on my cart analog meter needle, always stays in the white charge position. I have replaced the analog meter with a new one, but still have the same results. Please let me know your thoughts. Thank you. All right, well, the first thing that I would say is don't trust those analog meters. I, I don't, I don't really like when, when my customers would request one of those, I would, I would put that on their cart. But I, if I was building a cart, I, I never put one on there because they're notoriously inaccurate and they do cause confusion and you start to rely on that as your fuel gauge. And that, that's, that's uh, it's very deceptive when you start relying on that as your fuel gauge. If you have a good set of batteries, you're most likely not going to be able to run them down. If they're fully charged, a brand new set of batteries fully charged, you probably couldn't run them down in one day. I mean, you'd have to drive to the next town almost in order to run them down. So why would you need a meter? Just finish whatever you got to do for the day. And when you get home, put your golf cart on charge and the next day it'll be ready to go again is the way that I always looked at it. Plus they're a little bit inaccurate. Now yours, what it's showing is uh, that it needs charge. So my first question would be, are you sure you got a 36 volt analog meter? Because if you put a 48 volt analog meter on there, that's what it would be doing. It would be in the white. So I would have suspicions about that because they, they tend to work better than that. But, uh, I just don't like to rely on them is, is all we it, this personal preference, you know, obviously, uh, also, if you want to be sure, I, I would trust the high technology that the Summit 2 has and the Bluetooth app way more than I would that analog meter. So, but if you want to be sure about all this, just take a voltage reading on your entire battery pack. As long as your battery pack is about 38 volts, I'm on a fully charged car that's been sitting there for like overnight and you just go sit and you just go take a reading off your whole pack. And it's about 38 volts, should be about 38 volts. Then you know your car's getting a full charge and your, and your analog meter's wrong. Okay. All right, number two, I have a 97 club car, was 36 volt, 48 volt now. I bought it like this. After five years with no trouble, the switch that you move to go from forward to reverse gets very hot, hot enough to melt around the terminal studs where larger wires connect to. Any thoughts you might have on fixing it? The reverse doesn't work. I had a guy come out and look at it. He said it needs a new controller. I can live without reverse, but wires and switch getting so hot, you can't use the cart. 
Thanks for any help you can give me. Well, you probably just need a new forward and reverse switch assembly. I mean, all your amps that, that your car produces or pulls when you step on the accelerator pedal produces a lot of amps. There's enough amps in that battery pack to weld a wrench to something. There's actually enough amps in there to weld, to melt metal. So yeah, all your amps is going through that forward and reverse switch and have been for the last five years. Well, the bottom line is they do wear out. They wear out and it might be time just to replace the entire forward and reverse switch assembly. That would be everything there. I mean, you would replace everything there. That would probably fix your problem. I would not say that it's a controller uh, at all because in your system, your system is a series wound system with a mechanical forward and reverse switch. Your forward and reverse switch is the thing that's responsible for changing polarity to make your car go in reverse, not your controller. You know, in, in a car, in a, a shunt wound system with a run toe switch, the controller is involved in making your car go in reverse, changing polarity. But in your situation, the only thing that's involved is, is that forward and reverse switch. So you're, you're actually lucky because that's a lot cheaper than a controller. So it's very likely that that's all you need is a forward and reverse switch. All right, let's look at number three. I have a 96 Club Car DS and it started jumping when you put it in forward or reverse and doesn't move hardly at all. Any ideas on what could be wrong? I do have an idea. Uh, 96 was a very bad year for club car potentiometers in 48 volt electric cars. The potentiometer that was used in 96, it's not even available anymore. They had so much trouble with it that they only used that potentiometer for in 96 into 97, just like a year and a half to two years. And they ended up completely changing and going back to V-Glide, which was what they had used before that potentiometer. It was sort of like an experiment that failed and they ended up having to change it. So what people that have 96s and 97s that have that particular type potentiometer, what they end up having to do if they have a sentimental attachment to that car or they, they, they want to fix it, they make a club car made a pre M core to M core conversion kit. Now we sell it at golf cart garage, but right now it's out of stock because there's a lot of people in your position that, that are, that are doing the conversion from pre M core to M core. So that's what needs to happen is that you need to actually convert your car to M core. If that turns out what, you know, that if you don't have another obvious problem, like one of your batteries is causing this issue, but my suspicion is it's that your potentiometer is causing this issue. And in order to fix it, you would have to go to this conversion kit. So, you can call, I, I checked and it is out of stock right now, but go ahead and call up Golf Cart Garage, talk with one of our amazing customer service representatives that we have on staff here, and they may have some information about when that may be available. They know more about stuff like that that's out of stock than I would. They may be able to tell you when that may become available. Okay, number four. A 2014 EasyGo gas cart won't shut off. Well, if it, if it was shutting off fine and then all of a sudden now you let off the accelerator pedal and it's not shutting off and it's, there's only a couple of things it could be. You, your, 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 uh, activation circuit for your solenoid is staying activated. So you either got a, a stick caught in the, in the pedal or something uh, down there that's, uh, causing it to to causing the micro switch to still be activated, causing the solenoid to stay activated, or the solenoid is welded shut. The solenoid is going out, but it's welded shut instead of instead of broken open. Solenoid can break closed or it can break open. So you could have a solenoid that broke while it was closed. So it welded itself closed. So it's always connected to the starter. And anytime you turn the key on, it's going to just keep turning over. So it could be that. All right. Moving on. Let me check over here on Facebook and YouTube, see what's up. It don't look like we have anybody on the live right now. Okay, then we'll go back to number five. 
I have a 90 marathon easy go. It will accelerate forward or backwards, then it stops accelerating. You can let up on the accelerator and then mash back down again. It will start accelerating again, then cuts off again. <clears throat> well, uh, my first question would be about your batteries because, uh, believe it or not, a bad battery can cause that symptom because uh, your battery would fail under load, like when you would try to roll and it would roll, but as soon as it, it felt that load, it would drop out and then it would stop. And then you, you let off and wait a minute and do it and it would do the same thing. So I would want to eliminate that, you know, I always say that, I would want to eliminate that as being the issue first. It's very easy to do. You just do a, a load test on each battery when the cart fails. Like put, put your voltmeter leads on one of the batteries drive the cart a little bit and when it fails see if the voltage in that battery dropped way down and if it if it didn't go to the next battery do the same thing to the next battery you don't have to disconnect any wires to do this you're just moving your voltmeter from one battery to the next and drive the cart and make it fail and if, if you see one of your batteries fall way out you know when it fails then there, there's your there's your culprit if it's not that then it could be something to do with your wiper board or your, your your uh, potentiometer that you have going to I mean th in that year you could have a you could have a wiper board to resistors or, or I'm not sure if you could have a controller car in that year you probably have a wiper board to resistor setup uh, you, you could have one of your resistors is failing because of those, those resistors all they do their entire life is that they heat up and then they cool down heat up and cool down I mean that's that's your that's the old style speed controller basically it's just not an electronic speed controller it's a mechanical speed controller and so those obviously they wear out so you could have one of those one of your one of your springs is heating up and then just not not able to do anything anymore it's just gotten too hot too many times let's see number six I have a 2001 DS I need a tie rod right side for the steering box to spindle just the outer how do I determine if it's right or left thread without taking apart uh, the easiest way to remember or, to, or to, to determine that would be to remember the saying righty tighty lefty loosey so in other words go down there to the to the to the tie rod end that you're trying to replace and if you turn it to the left like you would a light bulb to unscrew a light bulb and it comes off then you know it's a right hand thread device if you have to turn it to the right to take it off then you know it's a left hand thread device but righty tighty lefty loosey would be normal normal is considered right hand thread number seven this is from Patsy I have a 96 gas powered club car the battery is new and charged we put a new solenoid on it it won't start I don't have a way to get it to a shop suggestions Well, I'm assuming that it is turning over. It just won't. It won't crank. Is it, if, is what you're telling me. Well, if that's the case, then you got to go back to the basics. You got to check for spark, fuel, and compression. And if everything's is been normal and the car hadn't been smoking or anything like that, it's most likely not compression. So you need to check for spark and fuel. Uh, fuel is very easy to to check for. Just pull the fuel line off of the carburetor and turn the car over and if fuel spits out of there then you you know that you're getting fuel to the carburetor now check your spark plug for if since it's not cranking and you're trying to crank it and you're turning it over you take that spark plug out it should be wet it should be wet with fuel and if it is wet with fuel that means that means gas is getting past the carburetor and you obviously don't get spark. You're obviously not having spark because if that car, if that plug is wet with fuel and spark had hit it, it would have ignited. You know, and, and the ignition is what makes the car crank. So you've lost something. You've either lost fuel or spark, most likely. Let me check on. Let's see. We're going to come back to number eight. Let me 
check YouTube and Facebook just for a second. Let's see. In YouTube, we got Kurt Bauer. What's up, Kurt Bauer? He says, hey, Tim, I have an 88 club car and the batteries are new. But when I leave the car for a couple of days, they drain. It has lights, so I assume it has a voltage reducer. Could this drain the batteries? Well, Kurt, in an in an 88 club car, you're most we're we're we're, we're talking about a 36 volt club car unless it's been heavily heavily modified. Now, in a 36 volt club car, you do not necessarily have to have a voltage reducer. Those lights could be hooked across two batteries, which would be a usable 12 volts. Uh, now, do you have a good switch on your lights? As long as you have a good on-off switch on your lights, then that's not the problem. Your lights aren't draining the car. Now, if it does have a voltage reducer, then yeah, it could. that could be the problem. That's why when I use a voltage reducer, I always put a separate switch on one of the main wires for the voltage reducer, so I cut it completely off. But it's, but I'm just saying, on an 88, it's not necessarily true that you're running a voltage reducer for your lights. All right, let's see. I think we're on number eight. This one is from Eric. What is the difference between the older year, 1982 to 2000, and newer years, 2000? Point five to 2013 are they interchangeable at all? I have a DS and want to purchase a rear seat kit. There are Eric. There are some subtle differences in the seat, the way the the, the design of the uh, the seat backs the, that you lean against, and the way they mount to the frame and the roof struts. There's just that's why there's a year break there. You know, I know the bodies look almost exactly the same. You know, for many many years, but the there was a change in 2000.5. So that's what causes, that's what caused that year break. You want to make sure with people that, that manufacture seat kits and uh, four passenger kits for club car DS, they want to make sure that they fit exactly or as close to exact, you know, so the customer does, has the least amount of problems with the install. So that's why there's a year change. Now, could there's, could some things be modified and be interchangeable? Probably so, but that's the year break is because they want it to fit as easy as, is you possibly can make it for the customer to install it. Let's see. Number nine. This is from Ryan. I already have a lift kit and I need new front shocks. Will SPN-0106 work with a lift kit or will I need longer shocks? Well, my question would be, why do you need longer shocks? Because uh, pretty much all lift kits, they, they don't require you to change your shocks, especially to a longer shock, uh, or they would have included the longer shock with the lift kit. The, what lift kits generally do is that they relocate the shock mount. Not only do they lift your car, but the shock mount is relocated to a higher position so you can just use your normal shock. So my question would be, why do you need longer shocks? Now, the, you could get different shocks. I mean, I, I don't, I'd like to know what lift kit you have that is, re, is requiring you to, to get longer shocks. All right, we've got one more regularly scheduled question. I'm just checking on YouTube and Facebook as we go along. I have a 2010 Columbia golf cart and the system green light is flashing three times. I can't find the code list for 2010. Is there any way you can help? Well, I remember this question this past week and I had a discussion with a, about it with a, one of the other technicians. Well, he went online with one of the other technicians, Greg, at Golf Cart Garage. He went online and he actually found a the code sheet for a Columbia. And I'll read to you what it says about the three flashes here. It says that uh, the, what the problem is with the three flashes on this is a Columbia code sheet. Now it doesn't say specifically on this code sheet that it's for a 2010. It just says this is a code sheet for a Columbia golf cart. 
it says MOSFET, or MOSFET short circuit. It says wiring polarity reversed on the flasher could cause this uh, could cause this error code. It says armature short detected, and what they're talking about there would be uh, inside your motor. They're talking about the armature in the motor could be shorted, and but also they do mention in that particular one that th that could be caused by brush dust. So you could have so much dust build up in your motor that it acts like it's shorted, but it's just dust in the way. So it may be an easy fix, you know, if you take your motor out and just blow it out. And then another thing they say is internal controller fault. So they cover their they cover their basis here on their on their code sheet because they've gone everywhere from controller to motor to flasher. They give you three possibilities on the three code flash. And I hope one of those helps you. There's, there's, we, we did. I thought that was neat that we found that code sheet. Okay, let's go over here to YouTube. Looks like we're done right there. All right. Uh, before I go, we'll talk about Gearheads On Demand, the service that we offer at Golf Cart Garage. Just remember to click on the link in the description. If you feel like you need to talk to a technician one-on-one -on -one about your golf cart related issue, you can talk to me. You can talk with one of the other technicians at Golf Cart Garage. Uh, just click on the link and that'll take you to the scheduling page where you can schedule an appointment phone call with me or you can schedule a video session where I'll send a link to your phone. You click the link, I can see through your camera. Everything would be cool. We take, uh, I get calls, I get people scheduling calls from all over the place. I, I take calls all week long from people all over, the, all over the world. I've even had calls from, I have talked to people who scheduled calls with me and then I would recognize their area code because I used to live in that area code and turns out I would know the person. I actually took a call from a man and helped him with his issue. Turns out he was my shop teacher in high school. I mean, that's, that's how small the world actually is. Uh, I thought that was very neat. He was my shop teacher from high school. From, I graduated in a long time ago. And he's still doing good. He was working on his golf cart. Let's see. Doesn't look like we have any more, so I guess that's going to be it for this week. Just remember, Tim... Tuesdays and Thursdays. We used to only come once a week. We used to only be here once a week. And now we're here twice a week. Tuesdays and Thursdays. Tim, Tuesdays, Thursdays, 12 o'clock noon Central Time. I'll be live twice a week. Um, don't forget to go to golfcartgarage.com if, you if you're interested in what uh, n another thing that's been going on all year. It's over now, but the videos are still out. You could go look at Extreme Golf Cart Makeover Season 2. Look for this logo and click on that. Dave's got a bunch of videos about what happened this year. The winners have been announced. The video is out interviewing the winners. But if you, you see, you know, check it out. See if you like it and then get involved in the next season because we're going to do it again for sure. All right. That's going to be it for me. I will see everybody. Let's see. Today is Thursday. I'll see everybody next Tuesday. Uh, the garage is now closed.